Well, we spent a little while getting there, but today we're finally ready to do it. We're going to talk about how to find the actual area under the curve. We talked a lot about estimating the area under the curve with rectangles or with trapezoids or, uh, or with Simpson's rule, but what about the real answer? I have occasionally referred to the fact that I knew what the real answer was, the actual area under the curve. Um, actually, we've already talked about all the ingredients necessary to compute the actual area under the curve. Really, it has to do with this total change business. If you recall, I hope you do, the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx is equal to the total change of f of x. That was the thing we talked about at great length. The total change from a to b. Another way of writing that is just like this, f of b minus f of a, right? This is the total change of f from a to b. You take the final value, which would be f b, and you subtract off the, the uh, first value, which is that a, and that difference is the change, right? The total change. This is what we meant all along. Now, this formula, we usually won't write it in this way with the derivative on the inside and the original function over here. Here's the way that I'm going to write the same thing again, again, but this is typically written in this way. If you just have any old function here, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to we write it this way, big F of B minus big F of A, where uh, F is the antiderivative of the little f, right? Because in this, in this, uh, this version, I'm writing the same formula again, only here, that is the derivative of that. And here, you have to make it so that is the derivative of that. So the big F, the little f is the derivative of the big F. Another way of saying that is the big F is the antiderivative of the little f. That's it, really. This actually, if you think about it, this is a formula which will allow you to compute the actual area under the curve if you know what the antiderivative is. This is extremely important. It's so important. It has an important sounding name. This is the fundamental. Sorry, I'm wobbling a lot here. Come on now. Oh, that's better. Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. All right, one of the biggest deals in calculus. Certainly, uh, you could say one of the most important facts about the definite integral. This is how you compute the integral. Once you know this trick, it is very easy to compute integrals. Let's just try one. Let's do my favorite old example, the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx. We've talked about this one a few times. If you recall, I told you, and I just, I told you out of nowhere that the answer is actually 1 third. Um, hopefully, I don't know if you believe me back then, let's actually compute the answer this time. Remember the answer is f of b minus f of a, where the b and the a in this example are 1 and 0. So it's big F of 1 minus big F of 0, where what is the big F? The big F of x is the antiderivative of x squared. And so, I hope you remember how to do your antiderivative. It's 1 third x cubed is the antiderivative of x squared. Technically, there's a plus c in here, but actually the plus c, when you're doing this kind of problem, is not relevant, and I'll, I'll say why in a moment. Anyway, this is f of x, so right here I can continue. This equals big F of 1, you plug in 1 here, it's 1 third times 1 cubed, minus, you plug in 0 here, 1 third times 0 cubed. And that's just 0, right? And this 1 cubed is 1, so the answer is 1 third, there you go. Now you should really believe me that the area under this curve is 1 third. Why does the plus C not matter? Just imagine, what would have happened if I, if I put the plus C? All right, put the plus C. Then right here, there would have been a plus C. And then right here, when you subtract, there would have been a plus C. And because the minus sign distributes, the C's would cancel out and you get one third anyway. So when you're doing uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, actually the plus C is irrelevant. Um, this way, this is, this is the correct answer. Actually, we're not typically going to write it in this way. This is a little, uh, 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 somewhat of a pain to have to you go this far and then sort of on the side you say what the big F is and then you plug the things in down here. Here's how we're usually going to write exactly the same process but I'm going to write it in a different way, which is a little easier to manage. All right, here's how we're going to write this. Because the uh, integral involves the antiderivative, I'm going to just right away, I'm going to write the antiderivative of this function. Okay, so the x squared, the integral thing here, turns into the antiderivative. 
As I said before, you don't need to include the plus C, although you can, the C should go away anyway in the answer. And then I'm gonna put this bar here with the zero and the one. So what this means, this is a new thing, this bar is not the same as the uh, integral sign, it's just a bar. This bar indicates in the next step, I'm gonna plug in one and then zero and subtract, all right? This is just a little shorthand notation so that you don't have to do this sort of thing on the side, all right? So you start with the original function, you write the antiderivative, and then you put the bar with the one and the zero to indicate that in the next step, you're gonna plug in the one and subtract and then plug in the zero, and then you do it. So one third times one cubed minus one third times zero cubed, and that equals one third. All right, this is the way that we're going to write these. This kind of a problem is is really easy if you know uh, how to do the antiderivative. Let's just try, I can make up something. How about the integral from minus two to seven of three x squared plus seven x minus four plus e to the x. How do you like that? Dx, all right? What is it? Don't think too hard about this. You just write the antiderivative of that thing. So you go, go down the line here. They're all added together. So you just go down and take the antiderivative each time. It's x cubed plus 7 over 2 x squared minus 4x plus any derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then I put my bar minus 2 to 7. Notice I, I don't put the dx here. You don't write dx here. dx is what you put in a thing which is inside of an integral sign, and this is not inside the integral sign anymore because I already did the antiderivative. Anyway, my final answer, here we go. You plug in the seven everywhere, and then you subtract it, and then you plug in the minus two everywhere. Seven cubed plus seven over two times seven squared minus four times seven plus e to the seven. That, I plug seven everywhere, and then minus, now I'm gonna plug in minus two everywhere. So it's minus two to the three plus seven over two times minus two squared minus four times minus two plus e to the minus two, and that's it. Gotta have those parentheses, haters. It matters. All right, that's uh, really all there is to it. Um, of course, there are some functions which are hard to do the antiderivatives of. I'm referring to things where you have to simplify first or things in which you need to do a u substitution. You can do the u substitution with this uh, with definite integrals. Let's do one example like that, and that'll be about it. What do you think about this? The integral from 0 to 5 of x times square root 25 minus x squared dx. How you like that? All right, uh, what makes this difficult is it's not obvious what the antiderivative is from the get-go. You have to do a u substitution here. I hope you remember how to do the u substitution. In this case, you should pick u to be the inside of the radical sign, which is that. Then the du is negative 2x dx. I do see x times dx over here, so I'm going to, uh, as usual, divide the constant here. I hope you remember how to do this. Minus uh, 1 over negative 2, or negative 1 half du, equals x times dx. So right here, I am not doing the integral yet, but I'm uh, just doing substitutions. This is the square root of u, and then what remains is x times dx, which is this, negative 1 half du. Now, you should say something about these numbers here. I'm not going to write 0 and 5, though, because... 0 and 5 refer to x values, and I've changed everything to use. I'll just do this, x equals 0 to x equals 5, all right? You should remember to yourself that this number, if you write integral 0 to 5, that actually is not equal to this, because this integral is the area under the curve from x equals 0 to x equals 5. If you wrote 0, 5, that would be the area under the curve from u equals 0 to u equals 5, which is not the same. Anyway, uh, I'm just reminding myself, these are x values, not u values. In any case, we can do the integral now. Um, first, I'll simplify by pulling the constant out. This is what you always do. And I'm gonna write uh, inside the u to the 1 half, because that's how we always do it, from x equals zero to x equals five, du. Now you do the integral, so you still got minus 1 half out front. u to the 1 half becomes u to the 3 halves. You increase the power, then you divide by 3 halves, which is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. That's the integral, right? Uh, if this were an indefinite integral, I would put a plus c. 
but it's not, it's a definite integral, so I'm going to do this, x equals 0 to x equals 5, all right? The last step is to plug in the 5 and the 0, but you don't plug it in for you, you got to plug it in for x, and so, how do we get x's back here? You put x's back here, just the way that we usually do in a u substitution. Uh, these 2's can cancel, right? You just get minus 1 third, and then this u to the 3 halves is 25 minus x squared to the 3 halves. Okay, and now I'm going to plug in 5 and then 0, all right? I, don't, I didn't write the little x equal, because this is really, I mean, x is the variable here, so that's what that means. Let's do it. This is my final answer now. Negative a third, 25 minus 5 squared to the 3 halves, minus negative a third, 25 minus 0 squared to the 3 halves. That's the answer. Uh, this actually you can simplify if you want to. 25 minus 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. So that, that whole thing is 0. Over here we have minus and a minus. That can be a plus. 1 third. 25 to the 3 halves power. That's the same as the square root of 25 cubed. So that would be 5 cubed, which is 25. So I think you're, uh, I mean, 5 cubed is uh, 125. I think that's the final answer there. Just in case you care. That is the area under the curve of this thing from 0 to 5. That's how we do it.